So, more than five years ago, my lady Bo sent me an authentic owo soup recipe, which I shared on my Facebook page. You can see the date. It was well received by Urobo people. Urobo wado! But being the Igbo girl that I am, it took me more than five years to try this soup. Yes, because I studied the recipe and it did not have some ingredients you would normally find in an Igbo soup. There are no vegetables in it. It contains a cow. I can't think of any Igbo soup that we would add a cow to in Igbo land. In addition to the a cow, it contains starch, gare, a stickna. I kept putting it off till now. So here's my attempt at preparing Owo soup. Using Bo's recipe as a guide, I prepared mine the way my brain told me to prepare it. So come with me on this journey to prepare what might be the worst Owo soup ever. Urobo people, are you watching? This video will challenge everything you know about cooking Owo soup. I used seasoning cubes, beef flavor, assorted meat and fish. I'll be using shaki, dry catfish, snails, momo, and cow ribs. Some people on that post say that they add shrimps, prawns, etc. But we are not big on shellfish in my home, so I skipped those. You will need edible potash, which serves as a thickener and gives the owo soup the classic taste. You can also use native salt if you have it. You will need gari which serves as a second thickener, I think. <laughs> because why do we have potash and another thickener? Anybody knows? You can also use starch as thickener. You need crayfish and any spicy pepper. I'm using dry ground cayenne pepper. Then you need palm oil to color it. First, soak the dry cut fish in cool water and leave that to soften. I mixed the potash with some water and set that aside. I ground the gare with a dry meal to turn it into powder. This is the gare I'll use as thickener for the soup. I feel that by grinding it, I won't see tiny pieces of gare in the whole soup. Next, I cooked the meats in my pressure cooker. With my pressure cooker, all these meats have the same cooking times, so I cook all of them at the same time. Add the seasoning cubes, pour water to just cover the meat. That's how I measure the quantity of water I use when cooking any soup. While that is cooking, clean and debone the dry fish we soaked earlier. When the meat and the rishi rishi are done, take some of the stock and add to the gari and set aside. Here, I'm just transferring the meat to a normal pot that I'll use to cook the soup. I, I don't cook soups and stews with my pressure pot. Slowly decant the stock into the pot. Add the dry fish, pepper and crayfish and start cooking. 
Next, <laughs> this is where it goes crazy. I know I am breaking the rule here because this is not what Bo's cooking direction says. So I pour some palm oil into a container. That's about three cooking spoons of palm oil. Then gently pour the potash water into the palm oil while stirring at the same time. I read the recipe and saw that this owo soup is pretty much like ncha that we use for abacha. It's yo and wobi. So I figured that if I prepared this ncha off the stove and added it to the pot of soup, it should be just fine. But let's keep going. Let's see how that turned out. Mix very well and set that aside. Mix the gari to make a smooth paste. Add more water from the pot if necessary till you get a paste like this. Not too hard, not too soft. It should be soft enough to dissolve in the pot. Like you know, when you add cuckoo yam to bitter leaf soup or ora soup. The contents of the pot have been boiling for about 7 minutes now. I add the potash and palm oil mix. That's the ncha. <laughs> Add the gari in lumps, just like when preparing bitter leaf soup with cuckoo yam. I add the lumps, then later, when I achieve the consistency I want, I take off the excess lumps. Stir and leave it to continue boiling. Don't cover it from this point onwards because it will boil over. If you look closely, you can see that it is foaming. This foaming is because of the edible potash. Stir it from time to time so it does not burn. Once I achieve the consistency I want, I remove the undissolved lumps of dairy. The soup is done when you notice that it is no longer foaming. That took about 7 minutes from when I added the palm oil and potash mixture. Take it off the stove. I will serve it with yellow gari. You can also serve it with yellow starch, which is why it is called yellow and yellow. The soup is yellow, the swallow is yellow. I only have white gari, so to make yellow gari, when the water boils, I add some palm oil to it. Add gari and stir with all my power till I get an even yellow gari. Here it is. You would have noticed that I did not add salt to this soup. The potash gives owo soup the perfect taste, at least for me. We don't eat a lot of salt in this house, but I will still advise that you be careful. Go easy on the salt when cooking this soup. If you try this soup, you will see why Urobo people swear by it. It is tasty, yo. I enjoyed mixing it with ora soup and bitter leaf soup. Perfect. Urobo people also eat it with boiled yam and boiled plantains. Urobo wado. Woo! Oh yeah. If you are an authentic Urobo person, undiluted Urobo person. <laughs> if you are a son or daughter of the soil in Urobo land, go to the comments and tell me how far. Okay? I receive lots of awesome comments every single day from you all. And I'm going to start bringing them to limelight. I'm not the only one that should be enjoying these comments, Biko. <laughs> and the awesome comment of the day goes to Uche Onya. Uche always leaves quality comments on this channel about how she and her husband have fun with these recipes. I am loving their 
that love. Woohoo! Here she's talking about how the banana bread went down in her home. Both of you should keep bonding over these recipes. Uchi, I love it. Click the link that pops up on the screen right now if you want to see the recipe for that awesome banana bread that Uchi is talking about. Bye bye. See you soon.